January is Alzheimer's Month. So, as we wind the months down, I thought it was a good idea to speak to two directors from the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia. One of them is based right here in Cape Breton. She's Catherine Shepard, one of a number of community coordinators that the Society has placed throughout the province. From her office in North Sydney, she also overlooks the First Link program for the Alzheimer's Society, and we're going to tell you what that is in just a few minutes' time. You're also going to hear the perspective of Kirsty Creighton. She is based in Wentworth, and she is the Alzheimer's Society's Manager of Education and Belonging. And you'll be hearing from her in English and French as we conduct a special bilingual interview for Telil 24-7. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the people at the Seniors Take Action Coalition for their input and suggestions on this particular conversation for Tell Ill 24-7. I wanted to start with you, Catherine, because obviously one of the things that we do want to center on is the presence and treatment of Alzheimer's disease in Cape Breton. Can you shed a little light on the importance of your position for Cape Breton Island, but also what kinds of things you and your office and your colleagues look at in terms of Alzheimer's disease and its general presence here? Yeah, so I'm one of the many community coordinators that are across Nova Scotia. I just happen to be here in Cape Breton. Um, and, you know, and our goal is to support persons living with dementia, their care partners, and also healthcare professionals um, who are on this journey with dementia. So whether you are a person living with the disease, supporting, guiding, and caring for someone with the disease, our goal is to provide some information, some education, and some resources you know, knowledge is power. And when we know better, we do better. Uh, so being that person um, that someone can call, that we can reach out to offer a public education session, perhaps we can direct people along to programs and services that we have available. It lets people know that they aren't alone. Um, we have an aging population and age is a risk factor for this, um, this disease. And so the more we talk about it, the more people know that there are resources available. The other opportunity when we talk is to let us take some of the stigma out of this disease. We want people to know that they are not alone. We want people to know that there are resources and that we are here to help. So let's pick up on that a little bit. And one of the reasons that I wanted to have the two of you in today was to speak about the education and the destigmatization, as you mentioned, of Alzheimer's disease, but also busting some myths about Alzheimer's. And one of the things I really did want to talk about, you mentioned the aging population. We feel that here in our part of Cape Breton in Richmond County and the General Strait area. Is there a misconception out there that Alzheimer's is an elderly person's disease, late 70s into 80s? you know, when we know it can strike much earlier. Uh, what do you think of that particular misconception? You know, we know that as people get older, that their risk, you know, it can go up for this, um, for this disease. But the truth is, you know, we have lots of people in our community who are much younger uh, that are being diagnosed as well. The Alzheimer's Society right now even offers, you know, a young onset support group virtually that allows people uh, who are younger than sort of that, you know, what people think about as that older age, right? Being diagnosed in that older age. And so we do have people who are much younger being diagnosed. Um, and so they have different conversations that they want to have. Maybe they want to talk about, you know, their young children or still working um, and, and sort of the things that tie in with that younger age diagnosis. Um, and so there are certainly some myths, but, you know, if, if people have any questions around you know, is this a truth or is this something that I'm just hearing? Uh, I always encourage people to phone and and talk with someone at the Alzheimer's Society. You know, our, our information and support line um, offers, you know, anywhere from master's in counseling to social work to death and grief doula. Uh, and so anywhere along that journey where people are, we can meet them um, and have that conversation that they need. So in getting ready for a doctor's visit. Uh, in talking about is this a myth or is this a truth, um, you know, or what can I do to, to help keep a healthy brain, you know, what are some of the things that we can do, um, you know, wherever people are uh, across the province and across the journey with dementia, uh, we're happy to help. 
Can I pick up on one point you made just a moment ago, the idea of a death and grief doula? And I think some of our viewers might be aware of the presence of doulas for the delivery of babies, but can you explain how that process works in terms of death and grief and the later stages of Alzheimer's and dealing with that for families? Yeah, so I think it's really important that we make a little distinction here to say that, you know, grief and loss um, don't just happen at the end of this journey. We have people um, who are facing what we call ambiguous loss and ambiguous grief uh, as soon as a diagnosis is made. And what I mean by that is, you know, physically the person is still here, um, but they're changing. And so the relationship is different uh, where people thought they would be at a certain point in their life may be different. And so those feelings of guilt and grief and loss are very common um, along, along this journey. And it's not just sort of at the end. So helping people understand that those are normal feelings, um, letting people know that it's okay, right, to feel this way uh, and support them across that is really important. And so that's why when we talk about grief, we don't just talk about it at the end of a journey. We talk about it, you know, as ambiguous loss throughout the course of a, of a diagnosis. All right. Thank you for helping us to clarify that. I want to shift things over to you, Kirsty Creighton, if I could, partly because I'd like to talk a bit about your particular job title. You are the Director of Education and Belonging for the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia. Can you speak to us a bit about that and how important each of those two very specific things are, education about Alzheimer's and the feeling of belonging for those who are struggling with it and for their families and their loved ones? Excellent question, Adam. And actually, it's it's a new job titled Manager of Education and mm -hmm. Belonging, um, just sort of over the last six months. So I think at the Alzheimer's Society, this whole notion of belonging has become, to, well, everywhere in the world, actually, come to the forefront. And, and we're no exception at the society. So the belonging part of my word is really... Um, we want to have someone at the organization who's focused, intentionally focused on making sure that all Nova Scotians on the dementia journey feel like they belong with our organization, feel like they can, they can call us no matter where they live in the province, no matter what their language to a certain extent, no matter what their culture is, that, that they, see, they see themselves in us and feel like they belong as, as part of the services and information that we, that we offer. So that's the belonging part. And then the education part is we've been doing education for years as an organization. Um, and I think we just wanted to pull that out. I think Catherine's got it in her title somewhere too, but we wanted to sort of at the manager's level have a have the word education in a title because it's a it's a focus of what we do across the province. And in that spirit, one of the reasons we wanted to have you participating in this conversation is to reach out to our viewers of Telil Community Television who have French as their first language. Il y en a quelques gens dans notre communauté d'île Madame de Comté Richemont qui parlent français comme leur langue maternelle. Pouvez-vous me donner quelques exemples des services que vous pouvez donner et la Société d'Alzheimer's de la Nouvelle-Écosse pouvait donner à ces gens, à cette personne qui avait des difficultés en anglais? Can you tell us a little bit in whatever language you choose about uh, some of the services you offer to those who speak French as their mother tongue? Bien sûr, bien sûr. Donc, um, tous nos services ne sont pas malheureusement adaptés um, disponible en français, mais um, toutes nos ressources, toute l'information qu'on partage avec la communauté sont traduites en anglais et en français. Donc ça, ça c'est ça c'est tout fait en français. Um, on a deux personnes qui travaillent pour la société, comme moi puis quelqu'un d'autre qui qui habite dans un autre coin de de la province, mm. qui offre des de l'éducation en français. Donc on travaille souvent à travers Réseau Santé. Si vous connaissez Réseau Santé. Um, pour faire des, des, des éducations pour le public en français. Puis, uh, je pense que c'était l'année passée, justement, que j'ai fait quelque chose à l'île Madame. Donc, je, je pense que c'est dans votre comté. Oui. Um, donc, il s'agit juste à, à nous appeler sur notre info line, puis on va vous donner le numéro plus tard, puis, mm. puis commander des services en français, puis on va faire notre possible. Puis, c'est surtout au niveau de l'information qu'on peut partager avec vous et aussi um, de l'éducation pour des plus comme des sessions comme ça qu'on peut offrir en français. Mm -hmm. So just give us a call and ask the question and we'll we'll uh, do what we can to offer our services in French and and just also a plug for other languages as well. So we do mm -hmm. have 
um, information in not not so much our educational sessions, but we can offer information in in other languages as well. Okay, uh, just quickly, any services available in Indigenous languages such as Mi'kmaq? Is the Alzheimer Society reaching out to those communities as well? So I've been working for the past number of years, uh, mainly with our communities in Cape Breton, uh, because that is my home base, but across the province as well. We've had connections across the province as well. Uh, and we've been able to create, um, you know, some culturally relevant and respectful materials in collaboration with our communities, with the communities of Cape Breton and Nova Scotia. Um, we've created a, a rack card, a specific rack card that is available. Uh, we've also been able to modify a, a product that was called originally the, uh, All About Me and the All About Me with um, collaboration from the First Nations communities, uh, we created what's now called The Story Is Mine. And so what that booklet does is it allows people to tell the story of who their person with dementia is. It then allows um, that family or connect to take the story is mine book um, into other areas where that person with dementia may be staying, being supported, you know, whether it's acute care or long term care. And it allows those that are caring for them to know a little bit about who they are, what they like, what they don't like, what their normal routine is. And so it really allows us to provide that person centered approach to care. Um, putting that person with dementia in the very center and making sure that those that support and guide and uh, allow them to know a little bit about who they are, what they like, and what they don't like. All right. Well, it's good to hear that. We look forward to seeing how that develops in the weeks and months to come. Kirsty, I'd like to shift it back to you for just a moment because I've spoken a bit about this with Catherine, just the idea of education and the perception of Alzheimer's in Nova Scotia, given that that is a key part of what you do for the Alzheimer's Society. Could you give us a sense about the changing face of Alzheimer's here in Nova Scotia, or at least the changing perception? Do you feel people are more aware now than they might have been even 10 to 20 years ago? Et pourriez-vous peu donner quelques mots en français au le même sujet? La perception de Alzheimer's ici à la Nouvelle-Écosse pendant les derniers 10 ou 20 ans? Bien sûr. Justement que c'est en, en train de changer ces perceptions-là. Um, dernièrement, on a une étude qui est sortie qui s'appelle le Landmark Study, qui parle beaucoup de ce qu'on va avoir dans l'avenir. Justement, Catherine n'a pas parlé de ça, mais um, donc ça parle un peu de l'avenir de, de, des maladies neurocognitives à travers le Canada. C'est en train de changer beaucoup, comme Catherine vient de dire. Um, ce n'est pas surtout pour les aînés, ce n'est pas surtout pour les personnes de 70 à 80, 90 ans. Mm. On voit de plus en plus des plus jeunes dans leur quarantaine, dans leur cinquantième um, année, hein, <rire> um, qui reçoit un diagnostic de, de, de maladie neurocognitive, justement. Donc, c'est en train de changer qui, qui a ce maladie-là, puis aussi, c'est en train de changer comment que on comprend ça dans la communauté, puis comment qu'on peut aider le monde, les familles, les proches aidants à, à prendre soin et à aider, à aider justement. OK. Merci beaucoup. I wanted to ask each of you, and whichever one of you wants to answer the question, feel free to jump in, just basically what the relationship is between the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia and Nova Scotia's Department of Health and Wellness. We're obviously seeing a changing face of healthcare here in Nova Scotia and efforts to make healthcare more accessible to all those who need it. How does that apply to Alzheimer's disease? Uh, what do either of you think about how the provincial government has been working with your society to improve treatment and recognition of Alzheimer's at this stage? We're working very, very closely with, with the, um, the Department of Health, Nova Scotia Health. They realize that it's, it's a, a, a something that's very real in our province. And, and I think we have a common understanding that our organization can do a lot of good. So we, we're working very, very closely with them um on this on this issue Catherine I don't know if you're sort of more on the ground maybe you have something to add to that but we're definitely working together on it yeah I I think you know I think that's very nicely said Kirsty to say that you know we are working uh, they acknowledge uh, the great work that we bring forward as the Alzheimer's Society and the need for it in our province you know we are uh, um 
a nonprofit charity organization, um, but we are funded. We do have some funding from the government to allow us to be able to provide some supports and resources, not only to persons living with dementia, their care partners, but also to health care. And so they acknowledge the, the work that we're able to do and bring for, forth and to kind of partner together in, in creating and collaborating. All right, I'd like to stay with you, Catherine, for just a moment, because one of the first things that I found out about you as we began this conversation is you're not only the community coordinator based in Cape Breton at this point, your office is in North Sydney, but you're also the director of First Links. And for those who, like myself, don't quite know what that is, what exactly is First Links and how does that help the Alzheimer's Society carry out its mandate? Yeah, so as the provincial lead for our First Link program, what that does is this program allows our uh, health allied health professionals across Nova Scotia to make a direct referral to the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia. So if they have anybody who is newly diagnosed on the journey with dementia, you know, having some questions or concerns, even, you know, towards the end of end of the journey, end of life, um, it allows them to step in and say, you know, let me take this little bit of stress away from you. Uh, with your permission, I can send a referral to the Alzheimer's Society. And then the society will take that referral and um, will connect with the person that needs it the most. It basically is a program that lets people know that just like the name says, that this is the first link in just a long chain of support. Uh, and so as a healthcare professional, whether it's a doctor, a nurse, an NP, a social worker, an OT, a PT, a dentist, a pharmacist, you know, anywhere in between, uh, it allows folks to connect um, and it takes the onus off the person who already has a really full plate. Uh, to connect with supports and resources. Mm. You know, one of the things that we hear when people connect is, I wish I had known about you sooner. And by a health professional making that referral, what we have found is people connect to the society about 11 months sooner. Mm. And when we stop and think about 11 months, and for somebody who is, you know, struggling to understand, trying to figure out what to do next, um, worrying about what may happen, 11 months is a really long time to live in that. And so as a health professional, being able to take that off of somebody's plate, right? I can see there's stress or distress. Let me take that off your plate and let me put this onus on someone else. Now, you don't need to worry about a number. You don't need to worry about making a phone call. You don't mm. need to worry about any of that. Someone else is going to do that for you. So as a health professional, this first link program simply allows you to connect uh, your client, your patient to our services, uh, as long as you have their permission. If you view our website, people will often say, well, how do we do that? And I say, well, head to the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia website. And if you, it's a pretty easy website. It's a click and, and point and, you know, it's, it's easy. The nice thing to know, though, it is evidenced and research based. Um, you know, we all use Google, but sometimes we don't come across the, the best resources. By connecting into our website, it will connect you not into the supports and resources available, but also information about the First Link program and the referral form that's there. You know, I, I jokingly say I've been in healthcare 23 years of my life. And um, when people say referral forms, I kind of shudder. Uh, but this is probably one of the easiest referral forms I've ever seen. It's so easy to fill out. You can fill it out online, you can email it to us, or you can fax it to us. And so it's a nice, easy way to connect as well. That all sounds very efficient and very easy to use. Uh, you knew I was going to ask this question. Is the program available in French? I'll say it in English first. Just sure. To, so so the, the info line where the first contact is made is not available in French at this point. Um, but if someone is calling and really requires a service in French, we can begin the conversation in French. Donc, on peut commencer la conversation en français. Malheureusement, jusqu'à date, tous nos services, le service de info line, comme on vient de parler, n'est pas disponible en français. Mais c'est sûr qu'on peut au moins commencer la conversation en français, le soutenir avec des ressources en français. Et dépendant de vos besoins, ça se peut que ça pourrait continuer en anglais à cause de l'expertise de, de, de mes collègues. 
Um, mais pour dire qu'on peut le commencer en français, bien sûr. We've covered a lot of ground in a short time, as I thought we might. Uh, is there anything that either of you would like to add about this, uh, particularly as we move out of Alzheimer's Month here in January and, and look to the future? Uh, any final thoughts just before we close? So one of the things I will say is no matter where you are on this journey, whether you've just been diagnosed, um, you know, or whether you've been living with this disease or whether you're just, you know, looking to know more, wanting to know more about what I can do, what modifiable risk factors that are, you know, we can talk about to keep a healthy brain, call us. We're only a phone call away. We have, um, all kinds of resources and education materials. We have trained staff that can support and talk over the phone. We can mail information out, but we also have tons of events that are happening that are either in person or what we call a hybrid world, which is virtual and in person. One actually happening on the evening of January 20, uh, sorry, January 31st, tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. um, and so if people want to attend a support group, if they want to come out and, you know, uh, attend a, a public education session, if they would like to learn more about Artful Afternoon, which is a program that happens uh, through the society, all they have to do is call and we can, um, you know, talk through what's available, let them know what's in their area. Um, if they do want to attend something virtual and they're a little unsure with how to do that, we can support that as well. And so it all starts with a phone call. Uh, our phone number is 1-800-611-6345. And we're just a phone call away. Kirsty, le dernier mot est à vous. The last words to you, uh, whatever language that last word happens to be in. Uh, any final thoughts? Je suis chanceux. Juste pour dire, just to say, no matter what your language, no matter what your culture, no matter where you live in the province, um, Nous, on travaille pour, pour soutenir, pour aider tous les Néo-Écossais. So we're here to help all Nova Scotians on the dementia journey. So feel free to call us. All that Catherine just said stands true. And if um, we need to make accommodations or alterations to our programs to meet your cultural linguistic needs, we will do that. Well, it's been a great pleasure to speak to the two of you. And we want to thank you for giving us some time in each official language of Canada to discuss Alzheimer's disease and also the services of the Alzheimer's Society. Thank you so much, Catherine Shepard and Kirsty Creighton for joining me on Telil 24-7 today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Adam. Catherine Shepard is a community coordinator based in North Sydney. She is also the provincial lead for First Link for the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia. And Kirsty Creighton is based in Wentworth. She is the manager of education and belonging for the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia. We've been speaking to them via Zoom and we thank the participation of the Seniors Take Action Coalition for helping us to prepare for this panel discussion.